Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you guys how to measure experimentally the charge to mass ratio of the electron. So the goal of this lab, like I said, is to measure the ratio of the charge on an electron to its mass, and we're going to do so by accelerating a stream of electrons through a measured potential difference. This stream is later on projected into a uniform magnetic field with a velocity vector v, and there is a magnetic force perpendicular to both these vectors that causes the electron to follow a circular path. So the data that will be taken are the current, the magnetic field, the accelerating to voltage, and the radius of a curved thing that we will be making. So the magnetic force F acting on the charged particle of charge Q moving with a velocity V in the magnetic field B is given by the following equation. For the electron in particular, the charge will be represented by the symbol E. And if the velocity and the magnetic field are perpendicular, the magnitude of the magnetic force is given by the first equation, which is F equals E V times B. And since the direction of this force is always perpendicular to the velocity vector, it follows that this force is a centripetal one. And such a force causes the electron to move in a circular path, which will later on explain why the beam of electrons started curving. And the um, centripetal acceleration is given by A equals V squared over R. And since force is equal to mass times the acceleration, as well as EV times B, we can assume that the following equation is valid. So M times the centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R, equals the other force, which is B times E times V. It is also to be noted that the kinetic energy acquired by an electron that falls through a potential difference V is given by the following equation, which is K equals V times E which is also equal to a half times the mass and the velocity squared. With this equation and the previous one that we have obtained, which is mv squared over r equals bev, we can deduce that the E and M ratio is equal to 2 times v over b squared r squared. And with this equation, we can assume that the value of the ratio of charge to mass is computed from the relationship between the measured accelerating potential difference v the magnetic flux density B and the radius R of the circular path which the electron beam will describe. So in order to conduct this experiment, we'll be building the following circuit. Uh, first of all, I will be introducing to you guys the different materials needed. So this is the amp meter, the front and the back. And then next item we'll need is a power supply with uh, positive and negative terminals. For here you have the power on and off. Next is this machine called the ENM Experimental Apartus. Uh, there is a lot of buttons. You can control the current, uh, what you're measuring, different voltages over here for the electron gun. And over here, what you see here, the big coil here, is going to create a magnetic field. And this green machine over here is the heater, uh, another power supply that's going to be controlling the accelerating voltage. So this is um, mostly the big materials that you'll be needing. And in order to connect everything, you will also be needing some wires. So um, I will be showing you guys now how to connect the circuit. So firstly, take a wire and from the negative terminal of the power supply, you're going to be connecting that to the negative terminal of the ENM experimental apartus where it is written 6 to 9 volts. And then next, you guessed it, you're going to be taking the positive terminal and then connecting that to the terminal of an amp meter where it's indicated A above. Just like that. And taking another wire, you're going to be connecting the terminal that says COM on top from the amp meter to the positive terminal of the power supply. Just like so. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So next we'll be connecting the electron guns to the heater. So first of all, we're going to be connecting the AC or DC from 6.3 volts. So the positive terminal of that to the positive terminal of the heater where it is indicated 6.3 volts. And uh, next, obviously, we're going to be connecting the negative terminal. So from the negative of the EMM apartus to the negative of the heater where it's indicated 6.3 volts. And then we will also be connecting the electron guns from 150 to 300 volts 
to the heater. So um, negative to negative. There we go. And you guys guessed it, um, positive to positive. So from the ENM apartus, 100 volts to 300 volts there, connected to the heater. So that's perfect. So this is how your power supply should look like after it's been connected. Uh, this is how your ENM apartus should look like. Oh, here's a closer look. So you can see the 150 to 300 volts and the 6.3 volts. And over here is how your heater should look like. So now you're ready to conduct your experiment. And uh, this is how your overall setup should look like. There we go. Perfect. For the final preparations, we're just going to be turning everything back to zero. So accelerating voltage back to zero. There we go. This one back to zero. All this on the heater. Uh, we're going to be flipping the toggle switch on the ENM experimental apartus to the ENM measure position. So let's flip that up. There we go. And also turning the current adjustment all the way back down to zero. So turning it counterclockwise. Perfect. And uh, as for the power supply, we're going to be needing around 9 volts. And as you can see, it's currently at 6. So we're just going to turn it to 9. And finally, for the amp meter, we will be measuring the amps, and it's around the 2 amps area, so we're just going to switch that to that region. So now we're ready to conduct our experiment. We're going to be turning on the green power supply, and we'll slowly see a red filament that's appearing inside the tube. By turning the current um, accelerating voltage, sorry, there's going to slowly be a green beam that's appearing, as you guys can see right there and uh, not to forget to turn on the power supply over here and as I adjust the current we're gonna see the beam start to curve so I will show you guys that right now oh and uh, not to forget that the current should never exceed 2 amps so I will be turning the current adjustment knob right now and you guys will see the beam curving there there we go and it's gonna turn into a circle and there is also a knob to adjust the focus to see the beam uh, clearer because sometimes it may be out of focus, just like that. And there are two beams. One is the real one and the other one is a smaller one that you will see in the mirror as there is a mirror behind the actual beam. So we're going to be aligning the two beams to measure their radius. So on the left and now on the right. And once they're aligned, right here, we were going to be using the ruler to measure the radius. So as of now, we will be taking our first set of data. And to do so, we will be changing the value of the magnetic field by changing the current that's running through it. So to do this, we're going to be setting the current to 1.4 amps. And... We're going to be variating the accelerating voltage from 170 volts to 230 volts. So as you guys can see right now, the beam created, um, well the beam shown right now is at about 230 volts. And I will be variating it right now to observe the behavior of it as we decrease or increase the accelerating voltage. So right now it's still at 230 And this is the approximate radius size. And as you guys can see now, the beam is slowly getting smaller. In other words, the radius is getting smaller. And that is because I am decreasing the accelerating voltage to around 170. So after collecting the first set of data, we will be now varying the magnetic field by setting the current through the coils to 1.6 amps and variating the accelerating voltage from around 170 to 290 volts. And after we do that, we'll be taking our final set of data, which is setting the current to 1.8 amps and varying the voltage from around 200 volts to 290 volts. 